Okay, we are top of the hour. Will we get going just in the interest of yeah. giving time for Q&A at the end? Uh, a very helpful tip. If you double click on the presentation, it makes it the primary kind of screen just in case you're struggling to um, to read what's on it. Um, so this is something that we are very happy to do, happy to, to share the, the CPE weekly report, but this is the live version of it, um, which is going to encompass the kind of F34 cycle. Um, as well as just give an update on what CP you're working on and what's coming up in the future for us. Uh, my name is Lee Griffin, and I have the privilege of being the manager that's over the CPE team. Uh, and Aoife, I'll leave you introduce yourself. Yep. Hi, everyone. So um, in case you haven't met me before, I am the lady who swears during the quizzes. I have been voted best beard twice, but I'm also the CPE product owner as well. So I generally tend to keep an eye on the the projects and the work that the CPE team does on a planned quarterly basis. Awesome. Thanks, Aoife. So we'll get into it. So um, so look, very, very first slide is always the, the definition of what CPE is. It stands for Community Platform Engineering. Um, we look after two very large and very important communities, the Fedora and the CentOS um, communities, and we're effectively there to help with the infrastructure and the services that support the development, the building and the releasing of those platforms, their artifacts and their deliverables. Um, we're effectively a team for hire as well. So if you have any great ideas for services that would make Fedora a more welcoming and wonderful place, if is the person you reach out to and we engage with the team. And we have a slide on that later on from the process perspective. Um, you see our vision and you see our mission. You should hopefully see this linked in, in every one of our outbound mails. Um, and it's something we're constantly evolving, right? So we, we do these exercises very frequently because the environment changes and people change and so on. So if you want us to consider something new um, or if you feel there's a gap in our mission or vision, absolutely reach out. We love that kind of interaction. Aoife. So that we are the CPE team, we are 26 people strong, um, although arguably four to five of us don't really do any real work, but the remaining ones, <laughs> the remaining ones do. They go from uh, system administrators to developers to ops. We even have interns and we do have the managers who keep the show on the road. And then there's me and Sarah who fit in the middle there and do all the fun admin stuff. But um, we go all the way from, I think our farthest member is in Brisbane, Australia, right to Portland, Oregon. And we not only have people all over the globe, we also run two projects. We both have CentOS and Fedora under our team unit. Okay, uh, I just want to talk a little bit about the future of CPE. Um, the first thing is we're hiring. Uh, we're going to enter a hiring phase pretty soon. Uh, I'm going to send a blog post out probably early next week onto both the Fedora and CentOS blogs letting people know what kind of roles we're looking for, the, the geos in particular. Um, and we're planning on dedicating that headcount as much as possible to Fedora. So we're doing a slight little internal shuffle, which you'll see in, in a future CPE weekly update. But the net result for Fedora is that we'll be in a position to service two initiative teams each quarter. The initiative teams are the teams that build out the funky new services and offerings um, that we really love doing. That is in addition to the lights on work that we have. So this is going to enable us to add more value to the Fedora ecosystem. Um, so in turn, it allows you to submit more ideas for consideration. Part of the reason that this hiring is happening is we're saying a sad goodbye to three of our, our community stalwarts uh, in Pierre-Yves Chabon, or Pingu, uh, as he's more affectionately known, uh, Stephen Smoogin, or Smooge, and Leonardo Rossetti, or Leo. Everyone has a shortened name, which is great in the team. Uh, the guys are all moving to an internal initiative within Red Hat that's looking at automotive um, and edge. And, and you'll see a lot of publicity and news about that in, in the coming weeks. Um, the good news is that um, Pierre and Leo in particular are staying within the CPE banner as the CentOS SIG enablement project is kickstarting. So effectively, we're going to help build out the SIG environment within CentOS uh, and help form new and exciting communities around that area. And the first um, product or customer or community, depending on what part of the, the company you talk to, will be automotive. So we're going to help under that banner. But the result of that is the three guys will not be actively working in Fedora on a day-to-day -day basis. 
That is not saying they're abandoning the project or leaving the community. I don't think that will ever be the case, just knowing the, the, the three people involved. But we do want to flag this, uh, and it means the responsiveness that you might have been used to with those guys is definitely going to drop. And obviously, with the new hires coming on board, it's a chance for new people to join the team and build up that trust and work for the Fedora community day in, day out. So a, a quick virtual round of applause for the, the three guys and thanking them for their service. And hopefully we'll um, get those jobs up soon. And if anyone on this call happens to be interested, we'll have our contact details at the end, by all means, reach out. So well done to the three guys and some fantastic service there. So going onwards and always with the community in, in mind, we have been sending out two surveys over the last number of months around what the community feedback would be on the CPE engagement. And we wanted to share some of the statistics with you today because we actually have a comparison. Um, and it was very interesting. And overall, we were really pleased that the engagement that you feel that we're giving you has always been positive. And in fact, it increased the second time that we sent the, the survey. So. Thank you very much for all of your kind words and support. They're, the comments are all read and they are all they are all really appreciated. So thank you again for that. The interesting thing about it is that we had a tiger board in operation and people weren't really engaging with us. They didn't know about it. The hell, I didn't even use it myself. And I should have. <laughs> so we made some changes um, in response to that. We moved our initiative repo to uh, over to Pagir, and we've seen a lot more traction on that as well. We also had some office hours on IRC too, um, but they were fine. But again, they, they started to drop off. So I dropped them. Nobody noticed. So we took that as, yeah, probably not a probably not needed. Um, a lot of people did make a comment that they would love to see more blog posts from the team, not just from management, but from everybody as well. So that was really valuable piece of information to get. We're definitely working on that. And by far and above, the weekly emails, which you have now live, uh, was the most favorite part of how we communicate and engage with you. So thanks. I do that. That's great for me. But uh, thank you very much for all of your feedback. And we will be looking to send another one of these surveys as well later this year. We might even try and get two in. Um, sincere thank you to Vipul and Michal, who's been driving these uh, surveys as well behind the scenes too, and to Ant and Sarah as well, who've been helping. We also will have a live poll running in Hopin, which I'll tell you a little bit more about that towards the end of the project, our presentation, I should say. Excellent. And just when we're on the community fields aspect, uh, I just want to do a very quick shout out to Ella Daniels, who was uh, an intern in the Fedora project working with Marie, who helped produce these absolutely wonderful trading card kind of pictures for our team. And they're a great addition. They're a great little marketing kind of collateral for the team. And everyone really deeply appreciates it. And it's just another mm -hmm. great example of how the community interaction is happening within our team and the Fedora community. So well done um, on that. Really well, really much appreciated from the team. OK, um, just to talk about the, the Fedora connection. Um, and I put 34 in brackets because we do this for every single release, right? Not just um, uh, this particular Fedora release. 34% of the CPE team work exclusively on the Fedora releases in a lights on manner or directly contributing through all of these really exciting uh, areas from release engineering, who look after our mass branching and the DRC and beta composes that we go through. Um, we have Petter in the technical writer corner, uh, looking after the release notes for every release and every other small important change that often goes unnoticed, but it's Trojan work that's still done by the team. Mm -hmm. We then have a fantastic sysadmin main group uh, who look after all of the lights on, the infrastructure, getting everything patched before the beta freezes and working hand in hand with the community to try and debug and work through some of the issues to get us to stable release date and more importantly, get your packages over the line. And then of course, we have some of our development team that help around the packaging, the testing, but more importantly, they're fixing some of the problems and issues in the tool chains that we use that ultimately go ahead and produce um, Fedora as a release. Some uh, interesting stats is since January, we've closed 57% uh, of the release engineering tickets that were raised. So we're on a, a mission to try and close more than we open, uh, which is problematic when you release every six months, <laughs> you get a lot of release engineering tickets coming into you. Uh, and 77% of Fedora packages were built for the F34 release. Uh, which is a, a phenomenal number um, that we've 
assisted and, and drove through. So just to break down our initiative process very quickly for you all, and um, actually speaking of uh, interns and the, the design team and, and Ella and, every, and Marie, we actually have a really cool uh, infographic on our initiative process that walks you through step by step, but it doesn't fit properly on one of these presentations. So I just had to get a little bit creative and make it a three step process for the interest of time, but it will be published to the, the CPE Wiki page as well very soon. But in case anybody needs a little refresher on it or have, hasn't heard of our process, what we tend to do every quarter when we're doing some planning is that we would ask that initiative an idea that requires a number of people for a number of weeks, possibly even months, um, is briefed in to me. You can file a ticket in our initiative repo on Pagir, and then I'll take it in and review it with the team. It goes against our mission statement to make sure that you know it meets that criteria that we've already set, and if it does, then it goes into phase two. If we don't accept your uh, your initiative, it's, it's not that we don't think it's a good idea, it's just that we, we just don't have the resources, the time, to be able to put to it and we don't want to just leave it linger in our backlog either so i will always communicate that to you that if we can't take on your project we are very sorry we hope we do see it land in fedora but there is usually a, a genuine reason why we can't do it those that we can do it goes into a scoping process so it's reviewed by the wider cpe team we also have some of our team members running in a subdivision called arc um, it is the advanced reconnaissance crew or angry rabbits committee whichever you would want to call them on any given day and the, that team primarily looks at initiatives that need a, a proof of concept or technical design document put to them and they uh, they will go through them a little bit over a number of weeks and come back and then that initiative is ready for quarterly planning it goes through the quarterly planning scoping with the stakeholders, with the original requesters, and we make sure that the information that we're gathering meets what the person who asked us to do the work wants out of the project, and that we can, and we can fit it into a time box, and we can plan it. Then it moves into the final phase, which is the actual quarterly planning phase, and that is just a further refinement on the, the initiative that was briefed in. Uh, more targeted conversations with our stakeholder groups, and then eventually it ends up in a priority slider exercise for our quarterly planning call, where all of our stakeholder groups engage in a discussion and they rank whatever projects that we have ready for quarterly planning in a priority queue. And then based on how many people the team has available to work in that quarter, the top one, two or three, depending on size and time, gets chosen for work. Anything then that isn't chosen in the capacity of one, two or three, just gets moved back into the backlog and it's ready to go into the next quarterly planning cycle. Fun, huh? <laughs> that is, it is, it is very fun. Stakeholders time to back me up on that. Um, but some of our recent work that we have completed over the last three to six months is that, in case you haven't heard, we have a new Fedora account system. A couple of the, the main bullet points is that we've upgraded the aging old FAST2 software to a brand new custom free IPA FAST plugin on the front and free IPA backed on the back. And a huge thank you to the free IPA team, namely Christian and all the rest of the guys who have been lockstep with us throughout the deployment. And all the community members as well who got that over the line. Sincerest thank you to you all for that. It means now that we have a loving new system, uh, we have CentOS account merge as well because of it. Group sponsors can have uh, permissions to just add people to their groups. And when you log in, if you have um, if you have an account and if you're in groups in both the CentOS project and the Fedora project, you can see your accounts on your, your profile page, which is really cool. We also had OSBS for Arch64 delivered back in December. And it was enabling ARM64 architecture for layering container images. And so we now have two supported architectures doing this, which is pretty cool. The other two pieces of work um, were community driven, but CPE team had assisted, mainly our sysadmins, our fantastic sysadmins, were able to uh, provide some resources, which meant that we now have a Flatpak indexer service and debug info D running in Fedora 2, which is really cool.
and that's only the work that we got done <laughs> and arguably software is never done but we do have some current project work as well that's worth a call out um, again in case you don't know we have center stream being built through cpe already we have uh, the stream 9 package sources in gitlab you can see the build system as it's running through packages uh, we have Compose infrastructure available. They are test composers, but you can still go and visit uh, composers.sendus.org. Um, we have contributor documentation published as well. Please bear with us. It is our first draft edit. There's a lot of edits to be made as we go through the process, and we really appreciate the feedback that we're getting from the community on steps that need changing. And then we also have some module building coming soon in Center Stream, which is really cool. We also have the RPM Autospec project underway as well. The guys have already removed the Git tagging feature that was in the previous versions, and they're going to be looking at doing the change log generation, making that functional, making sure RPM Autospec supports non-official builds, like scratch builds and local builds. And then we want to take it to everybody for testing in staging as well for performance issues, tuning, until we start looking at um, production deployment later in June. So they're actively happening. But on the side, as I mentioned, we have an ARC division, and they are running a PDC investigation. You may have seen Adam Sala reaching out on the Devel and InfraLess asking for, um, for use cases for the project. So he's more or less collected as much as they can. The end goal of this is to look at how we can make PDC more sustainable longer term. And at the moment, the guys are looking into investigating if we incorporate PDC in existing applications to make one less or possibly simplifying the current version of it as well. So once we have a little bit more of an idea of which of those options is the best choice, we will communicate straight out to you. So lots happening. I'm on a call. You're also not on mute. <laughs> yeah, all right, we're gonna talk um, a little bit about GitLab now. So this was something that we worked through last year. We went through um, a rather long and protracted um, requirements gathering exercise and CentOS was uh, our first project to move in that direction. And um, so Aoife just mentioned the CentOS um, stream work that we've been doing, that's now the front door to rel development. Uh, and the team, because they've engaged so heavily here, we've learned a lot about the, the GitLab um, stream instance and how it's set up and configured. And we're after requesting a development instance um, from GitLab to start exploring some of the FESCO feedback that we received to see where our gaps are, see where our opportunities are. And our aim is to come back to the community with our analysis and chart a path forward in Q2. Uh, I know there's been a SIG formed around source um, Git, which was formed in the last couple of weeks, I believe. I was following it on the, the, the mailing lists. And we're going to try and engage through that group as well, just to get more people looking at it and um, to explore through the feedback and just see what our next steps are here. This will be done transparently. It will be done in tandem. Um, and we thank everyone for their patience on it. It has been a long project, but as you've seen by the volume of work uh, that Aoife has just described that we've been working through, uh, it's hard to give the time and headspace to multiple large initiatives at once. But the good news is we're coming up for air and we're going to come back and revisit this uh, this coming quarter. Okay, um, that is the end of our weekly update. So Aoife, you get one email off this week. Um, feel free to reach out to any of us with questions or comments. Uh, both of our mails are there. Uh, we're both on Twitter as well. Uh, I'm at Lee Griffin and at Aoife Maloney4. There's three other better Aoife Maloney's out there. We just haven't, haven't found them and hired them yet. So you're in luck that you're number four on it. Uh, and we have a CPE channel on Freenode, uh, which is Red Hat CPE. Yep, we also have, um, you can read a lot more about our our team on the docs.fedoraproject.org page that we have gives you a breakdown of those lovely initiative processes that I outlined, but it also gives you a timetable and what we do, what our mission statement is, and all that fun stuff. And I mentioned earlier with our community field section that we will have a live poll and hop in. We want to know how, if you want more engagement from us and how best to give you that engagement. So um, our lovely assistant, Vipul, who we'd be lost without uh, is going to have that live poll up on Hopin that you can please take a minute or two to answer that and the feedback then will be sent to us so we can look at how to actually incorporate that. And again, just on behalf of both Lee and I and the wider CPE team, uh, thank you all for your continued support and your engagement with our team throughout our work. It genuinely 
would not be possible without the support of the communities that we serve at all. So thank you, sincerely. Okay, that is us. Um, we're happy to take any questions that people might have for us. We got a couple of minutes before um, the session is officially over. Uh, and just to echo Aoife's, Aoife's thanks on behalf of the team. Uh, we're only two people out of a large team that could come and come and chat to you today. Um, but I know the support, the contributions, um, and the camaraderie really that's in the, the community is certainly appreciated by everyone. I'm just going to scroll to see, do we have any questions? We have 10 minutes. Feel free to ask whatever springs to mind. And we're generally just getting some nice comments, which is always good. The lack of swearing, but I was yeah, warned. I counted <laughs> one. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, thank you very much, guys. The, the, it's really appreciated. Really. I, I did see I some heard. chatter uh, about posting the job links and so on. We will have them up on a blog post. Um, we're just finalizing with our internal talent team some of the, the specifics and details. So we'll share the blog post uh, more publicly. The draft is in place already. It should be good to go Monday or Tuesday of next week. Um, watch out for Twitter and other social accounts. We're going to hopefully get the Fedora accounts uh, to propagate it out as well um, and we do take internships and um, so if someone is interested in an internship yeah you can reach out to anyone in the team we do it in in different phases depending on budget depending on funding and so on they might not necessarily be advertised right now and we can keep your request on file for when we do get an actual um, funded amount moving forward Uh, ages we do the internships at so um it is a college driven internship so college age uh, i won't even dare guess what that might be for for some people in the world but effectively uh you have to be affiliated uh, with a formal college because a lot of the the funding comes from early talent programs which can link in with those colleges and universities that's a, a kind of corporate requirement for from my understanding um, we do work, though, uh, very closely with Outreachy and um, Google Summer of Code and some of the other internship programs out there, which don't have those kind of restrictions on it. I think we even worked with uh, the secondary school, the second level or high school students um, in, was it Google's Call for Code? I can't remember that the acronym for VIPL. Uh, might remind me of it because uh, he helped me out on that side of it. So we do work with, you know, teenagers, but for the formal employment side of it, uh, it would be people in formal education. Yeah, there's the comment around um, linking the Twitter blog post. Yeah, we do. We do use the um, Fedora community yeah. uh, Twitter accounts. We don't have our own, but uh, there's never been an issue with the Fedora project or CentOS project retweeting anything that we personally may tweet on behalf of the team. So always do check either one of those or both. We tend to be across the two. And the blogs generally go up on the um, blog, community blog for at Fedora project. Yeah, and our personal accounts share them as well. Uh, Grace, another question, are internships uh, directly code related? Uh, that aren't directly code related yeah. sorry uh, in general we can only support an internship if we have the skills within the team so if you look at the slide we had up there we had release engineering system administration and um, technical writing uh, as well as software engineering both back end and front end and um, that kind of covers the whole gambit the only gap i'd say we have is quality assurance or quality engineering and um, from a, a kind of day job but even then we have some folks have great experience in that area um, design and maybe websites are probably the two that we'd have the minimal amount of experience from a supporting perspective. Uh, Edward has a question. Where can I direct an official invitation to participate in the Fedora podcast? Email Aoife and I on it. Um, our mails were on the last slide, but I'll type them into the chat here um, just so you have it. Thanks, Finger. And no, sometimes I second don't. The spec isn't the curse.
Yes, he is sure, Mark. I don't always swear. Okay, any final questions? If not, we might wrap it there and thank everyone once again. Yeah, it's always a pleasure talking at, at Fedora driven events. They're really good fun. So thank you again for everybody. And we'll we'll hopefully see you at Flock slash Nest, whatever the the next major one is. If not, the F thirty five release party. Yeah. It is Nest, yeah. I was being optimistic it could have been flock <laughs> next year. Thanks everybody. Have a great rest of your day wherever you are. And um congrats again on getting F thirty four out the door and a big thanks to Marie for the, the invite for us to come today and just for the general organization around us. Yeah. She does serious magic on these things. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. See you all. Bye.